Good morning. This is how I look in the morning. So, yeah. I've been busy, 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 busy. Working on that plugin. I haven't been finishing the map. The map's almost ready. It's lots of little tiny things. I always polish, polish, polish. We gotta have it decent. Um, but I've been wanting to make a video, but you know, no time, no time to make a video. Um, I listen to videos while I work, but when I get this busy too, I sometimes have to listen to them uh, twice, you know, and I, I don't have time. So. Who knows? I watch an unseen perfidy video as to see what's going up with him. And he was talking about why he wasn't a Republican anymore. And it was because of some other guy that was a Republican. Which I thought made sense. For him. I didn't really get his thing about social conservatives don't want small government. I don't understand how somebody that supports spying like we do. How could a small government do that? Small government. And that's the other thing, too. I was watching Democracy um, Now, and uh, they had uh, the whistleblowers, including Thomas Drake, that went over there to Russia. All praising Snowden, praising, praising Snowden as a great patriot. For good reason, because they want that stuff to, to stop, and they've done it through proper procedures and you know the proper procedures are to damp it down and you know it's obvious the Snowden method stops the very same program that the Drake method should stop on the other hand it was interesting because Snowden uh, has particularly mentioned Drake and Drake's experiences and his advice uh, as motivation um, and um, I don't know if you want to call it uh, inspiration, but whatever is is an informative experience that he learned of that that told him what had to be done. And uh, you know these people, not Snowden, but the rest of them that actually work directly for the government. I'm not sure about Snowden's case, but I once I worked for the government in the past, and you actually have to. Uh, swear an oath to uphold the Constitution. So when people say, uh, well, you don't have, it's obviously illegal for, it's not as obvious as you might think. Somebody is sworn to repeat and uphold uh, an oath to uh, the Constitution, then they're supposed to be making a judgment about that. They are one uh, individual citizens loyal to the Constitution are supposed to be one of the last checks and balances. Another un unfortunate thing uh, with Unseen Perfidy, and I'd send him a PM, I don't know if this is why he decided not to talk to me, is I warned him, I thought this was a friendly thing to do, uh, that I was gonna, was planning to take issue with about the Philippines and then we discussed the Philippines because he quoted the Philippines as a great example of one of the few times that the United States not everybody can look as good in the morning as me um, in the United States uh, uh, succeeded was able to succeed at a um, counterinsurgency effort we used concentration camps and I was meaning to look that up before I place play. I was going to look it up, but you know, in most wars, the uh, wounded to dead ratio. You know, there's a lot more wounded. I think in the Philippines it actually went the other way. Look it up. The wounded to dead ratio. They were obviously killing people on the field and whatnot. Plus, we waterboarded. It's not torture. Well, it is in the Philippines for sure because most of the people waterboarded died, I believe. Again, you double check my statistics. Run along, check, check my statistics. I think more than half of the waterboard people died, but maybe, maybe it wasn't. But a lot of them died. 
Furthermore, the Philippines had been having a revolution against the Spanish for three years. They were winning it. Why did we take it over during the Spanish-American War? The war in which we come across like Nazis. Um, because to help the Philippines free, that's what we told the people. We've been lying about how good we were to our people while we went around doing bullshit like taking over the Philippines. So if you want to call it a success, then it just means that it shows you what success means. That there is no success fighting counterinsurgencies unless you go all Nazi and get away with it. So yeah, government shutdown. I just think Americans are kind of silly. They don't realize the kind of crazy shit that can go down. It's like if you're going to go through one of these... Um, you know, tanks in the street, driving around, things collapsing and stuff. It ought to be like with Greece, that it's really, well, you got there and it's like, oh, fuck, crisis. But we're like, get mad at foot. Cuss at foot. Fuck you, foot. Shoot foot. <sighs> then blame someone else for the pain. In other words, we're going to actually try to make... one of these crises and then pretend that because of American exceptionalism nothing could go wrong we can always dive right out into the flames we'll pull up at end time seriously let's just make two countries okay let's just split in two I would say four or five or just infinite but uh, let's make two countries, all right? I mean, I'm not really confident that the Democrats will do good, and I'm pretty sure that the conservatives, Southern conservatives, would totally fuck up. Um, but whatever. In both cases, the main problem is these guys have each other as excuses. Well, I'm trying really hard with him. Him is why I didn't do it. No, it was him. So let's just do that, man. We're not getting along that well anyway. But it's the country. Let's not break it up. We're muted. No, it's it's time, man. We're just not into each other anymore. We never really were. It's just the common enemies, and we've run out of common enemies. The whole world. We went through them all. Ran out of common. What about terrorists? Well, they're going to hate you guys, and no, not us. Uh, we, we aren't going to um, you know, rape and pillage anymore, and so... La 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 would not be true. Actually, a northern state taken over, you know, presumably by a, a domination of uh, Democrats, it would be really warlike. One more than the, they are right now, because for one, they'd want a, a, a border. Build a wall along the border with Texas. So, anyway. So what else is going on? There's something else that's trying to catch up. Make a video, catch up, catch up. Um, oh yeah, um, I always have time for comments, especially comments, you know, just with crazies, like in um, just going through it, just enjoy going through like the Thunderfoot comments, finding people saying really stupid things, or I made some comments and they hide them really quick, but then they flood in and they go, oh damn, bro, bro. And, um, it's just, I just wish we all had a historical perspective. I mean, I think Thunderfoot's argument is total bullshit. But the bullshit squared part is that he's acting like, you just don't get it. It's an old thing. It, it, there's legitimacy to this idea. Blame the victims. Like, if you had a moral system where you should take what you can get, get it while the getting's good. If somebody doesn't want it taken, they should be watching it. You know, like a criminal society. In a society like that, it's like, lock your fucking door if you don't want it taken. <laughs> don't be flashing your money around. <sighs> don't live in a big house if you don't want it burned down. <sighs> right? So, a society like that. And we kind of come from a tough oak. 
History's written by the victory victors. We make history now. If you want something, go take it. There's kind of, we have kind of a history like that. So it's a legitimate idea from that culture. It's not a new thing. It has way plenty history. It's not a new thing. Now to make, we think that's bullshit, we people like myself, and we, someone like myself, want to come up with a word for it, or a phrase, something, and we came up with blaming the victim, and we made blaming the victim look like shit, like only shitty people do that. And for people that go, yes, but you need to be safe, right, plenty of us teach safety classes, just like you guys might but that's different because if there's 20 factors and five of them you have it can have to do with like well just don't go to Mexico then those are not blameful culpable factors those are issues but they're not causal factors so when you're being the social doctor and you're going in there and trying to fix the situation those aren't things you fix. You tell people about it, but you don't fix. You don't say, well, geez, we just have to make it criminal to uh, wear a low-cut blouse. No. It's a non-culpable. There's a lot of things that come together, and, and the ones that um, can't be predicted can't be part of safety precautions, and the ones that are just incidentally part of a safety precaution doesn't change how the responsibility so if a rape victim comes to you and you say don't blame yourself that's not synonymous in the in the don't blame the victim uh, worldview it's not synonymous with saying uh, it's a safe neighborhood you should be able to walk there at one in the morning you know it's, it's just not it's about we got sick of hearing people say well there's lock your door make clear air just be healthy. Just don't get sick. Just ask your parents for money for college. Just just make it, man. It's always on your individual self. Yes, there's grains of truth, and people have to do things for themselves. But when it comes to crimes like rape, uh, labor abuse, for that matter, oppressive, you know, sweatshop conditions, things like that, we don't believe in blaming the victim. We'll just get a better job. There's other jobs. You know, we don't believe that justifies conditions like that. So we came up and we slurred your argument with a a name that isn't a original. It's not automatically a slur. Just we made it look really bad to blame the victim, and we made it look really bad to go into wars like Vietnam. And then we were scared about Vietnam and the first Iraq War. Oh, no going to be another Vietnam. And then we went in there and it's like, it's nothing like Vietnam. We just did bomb, 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 bomb. It's like, of course, yes, but the other difference with that war is that the guy we beat is still in power. We didn't like that part. And then Bush came along and it's like, there's nothing wrong with war. Vietnam, Vietnam. Let's go. And America's all like, yes, yes, no, we don't have to be scared of Vietnam anymore. Now we have a rat to be scared of. Who would have thought it might become a quagmire? Oh, everybody. But then they were so mad because of Saddam. Didn't actually bomb 9-11, but most people think so. So let's go to war. By the way, I'm for small government. I'm, I'm one of those people. A conservative. And that was another funny thing in Unseen Perfidy's video. It's like... Publican, I, people always say this, I love it. Publicans aren't for small government. And he's not really for small government. And then he called Goldwater the father of modern conservatism. Yeah, in people's fantasy lands, conservatives in general live in a fantasy land. He's not one anymore, so obviously this doesn't apply to him. Barry Goldwater. President Barry Goldwater, the father of modern conservatism. Ayn Rand. Father of modern conservatism. They didn't get very far. They just they they said some nice speeches and stuff. They didn't enact the plans and prove the point. And 
small government, small government. Why would those guys, what actual Republican party apparatus in power, small government, when, ever in history, when? Obama has way too big a deficit and spent it on things that a lot of them that look wrong, that look like he must be paying off bribes would be the only defense I could see. But he's got the deficit since Bush. Reagan spent lots of money. I don't really... Small government is why... Because we're going to cut taxes because we want the government to be small. But they, but they don't actually do that. They might cut some taxes and that's the reason it doesn't actually add up. When did they... Why do you get to just say, I like small government and then make big government and people are like, yeah, but they're the ones that are forced to model government. See, people have two... No, I can't write on there. There's always two things. There's the philosophy people say, and then there's the, the philosophy you can see in their actions. And then there's other ones, too, like the philosophy you can see in their speech actions. Like somebody that says, I don't like talking to people that are disrespectful. Are any of you disrespectful? I don't want to talk to you then. But if they choose to only talk to people that are disrespectful, no, they want to do that. That's just behavior. So Republican Party, small government, small government, yay, yay, let's go, small government. Don't let gays get married. Don't let blacks get married. Small government, small government, small government. Are you fucking stupid? No, they're not for small government. They're for them running the government in the show. I mean, politically, there's a lot of, um, you know, hypocrisy and just getting things wrong and emotional things and you know you could forgive the mistakes some of us just like oh, I couldn't figure it out that's what I have but a lot of it is um, you know as we know really like the duplicity is either you've got some sort of insanity or personality disorder or you really are just sociopathic and you know better but you argue it and the Republican conservatives a big part of them but certainly not all of them um, but like these Ted Cruz's and stuff, they're just getting into a situation where it's it's just how, how do you want small government and not argue to put to to make the military smaller? So you have people like Ron Paul that actually will be consistent like that. But it's the broke clock thing. He's against everything: Department of Education, roads, you name it, healthcare, whatever. He's against it all, so at least he's consistent enough that military spending is part of the all, but we still need a strong border. And so people are like, yes, yeah, somebody that's more honest, but he's not that honest. And in general, the rest of them, I mean, they support hundreds of billions of dollars to fight wars, which violate other people's freedoms. Oh yeah, that was the thing too. I saw Skeptical Heretic. It was a disgusting thing where he was saying it's not a big deal the people we lost. Not a lot of people. It's not a big war. Like, we're sorry, but it's not. It's just a few thousand people. And that's what we lost. It's like, what about the other people? What about the casual cost of war being the casualties of all the sides? We're leader of the world. We only count our own dead. We're leader of the free world. And we count our own dead. <sighs> this is the morning. Okay. My dog woke me up. She knows in my hand. She never used to do that. She figured it out. I gotta go out. I gotta go outside. Nuzzle hand. Nuzzle hand woke me up. I was gonna sleep in. She's so sweet. Glad she learned that. But sometimes she just says to fuck with me. I just want to go outside. Let's go to the park. 
Okay.